Yeah, so I'll just keep it brief with an introduction and look forward to any discussion and questions. So I'm, I'm here from the Schrodinger Material Science team. And for those who are not familiar, uh, Schrodinger is a software provider in molecular modeling, both physics-based uh, and machine learning methods. So this slide we like to use as a, what is it in one image? So we work with companies in all of these different areas, also academic institutions. Uh, we merge methods uh, for multi-scale. So all the way from quantum to MD to coarse grain. And then, as I mentioned, we have uh, data-driven tools on top of that, all into single interfaces uh, that are used by our uh, commercial and academic customers. So uh, I chose just four quick high impact examples to put on this slide, and I won't go into a lot of detail about them, but I chose four examples that are all um, public and that there's information about. So if anyone's interested, you can find either publications or blog posts just by searching more or less the tagline uh, and the companies involved. But to, to briefly describe some of the efforts of the last few years uh, from our material science program, we work with Panasonic on things like screening organic semiconductor materials. This was an example of a project for running uh, DFT calculations on about 250,000 molecules, about 7 million calculations, 16 days of, of wall time to identify uh, materials that could be used in RFID devices. Uh, we're currently working with Reckitt on the design of new packaging materials for sustainability. So with them, we use mainly all atom molecular dynamics and machine learning methods to identify new materials that will be compatible uh, with, with their goods. We also work in the formulation space. Most people know Schrodinger as a life science company. And so we have a lot of relationships with pharmaceutical companies. So uh, we push the material science uh, direction there by helping them with studies of formulations. So last year, we or two years ago now, we had a, a paper come out with AbbVie studying uh, amorphous solid dispersion dissolution. So basically the rates of dissolution of drugs in aqueous media coming out of polymer matrices and then how to optimize those formulations. And then lastly, a paper that just came out with L'Oreal on uh, new eco-friendly cosmetic formulations. Uh, so using, in this case, uh, Martini coarse graining to study properties for uh, biodegradable uh, cosmetic formulations for L'Oreal. So these are just some examples of the types of projects that we work on. But I, I think the interesting thing to, to discuss, and, and I appreciate that Ali brought it up uh, in the beginning, uh, is an issue that, that we see, which, which we would identify as sort of this workforce development challenge. So what I've grabbed here is this report that Deloitte put out about a year ago. It's, it's for the chemicals industry, which I recognize is not exactly the materials industry, um, but I think it's telling some of the information in the report identifies that you know the future roles that, that we're going to see in the industry are things like computational material scientist, nanochemical engineer. And you'll see in the descriptions and skills needed, we're going to be looking for um, applicants who have skills in computational tools, technical software, um, not just uh, data science, but also molecular modeling, um, and that there's going to be a skills gap. So uh, the analysis from this report says that at least in just the chemicals industry, they imagine over 100,000 unfilled jobs in the next 10 years due to the, the skills gap of the population. And so there's sort of a call to uh, train and that's something we're really interested in at, at our company, of course, um, not only to train users to use our software, right, but so that companies become more well-versed uh, in using tools like this to advance their R&D programs. Uh, we find that there are a lot of uh, R&D divisions at companies who would like to be using advanced data science methods or using molecular modeling methods, but don't necessarily have a staff uh, that's skilled to use those. And, and then maybe they need to do contract work, they need to hire specialists, right? And so I think we have a, an interesting challenge to face where we have all of these new tools, uh, but we're not necessarily caught up in terms of how we're training our, our future scientists, material scientists. So uh, this is something I'd, I'd love to discuss and that at Schrodinger we're really interested in and, and is the main line of my work uh, at the company.